It's important to understand how the numbers are generated. So in the next 30-odd minutes, I'm not going to try and teach you all about probabilistic valuation techniques. Uh, that would be pretty impossible. So you may not understand all the concepts, but I want to show you just how complex some of the number calculations are to give you a feeling for what you should be looking at in the, in the end results. Because there's, there's, unfortunately there's a lot of companies, and it tends to apply mainly to the smaller companies, that don't actually understand the numbers themselves. So never mind that the investor doesn't understand the numbers, the company producing the, re, the press release doesn't understand what he's doing either. Okay? And sometimes even the big companies can get it wrong. So uh, some people can remember even Shell having to publicly admit that they'd overquoted all their reserves in Australia. So there's a company that's got thousands of highly technical experts looking at it, and they still misinterpreted the rules. Okay? So let's start, first of all, I have to define a couple of, of, a couple of things. Um, David's used the words risk and uncertainty quite a few times in his discussion. So when we're dealing with... Um, oil and gas, reserves and resources, is a fact of life. We always have to deal and report what the uncertainty is and what the risk is. Now, a lot of industries define these two things slightly differently. So within the oil and gas industry, I'm going to tell you how most oil and gas companies define these two, which might be slightly different to other sectors. So the first thing we're going to try and define is um, what is risk or chance? Now, risk or chance in an, into an oil company it, it, it's a discrete or generic event. That's what we were replying by, by saying the word risk or chance. It's a discrete random variable that can only take a distinct value. So the obvious example on the screen here would be throwing a dice or tossing a coin. So if you tossed a coin, the answer can always be head or tails. It can't be anywhere between the two. All right? It's either one answer or the other answer. If you're throwing a dice, it's got to be either a one, two, three, four, five, or six. It can't be five and a half or four and a half or anything in between. So if we're dealing with an oil and gas company and we're drilling, say, an exploration well, and we say that there's a one in six chance, it's like throwing a dice. So if a six was success, five out of times out of six, we're going to be dry. But that throwing of the dice is a random event. So at the end of the day, despite all our technical excellence, the, the final drilling of a well is down to chance. Okay? Now, why do, in that case, why do companies do all this? Well, because they feel that by applying technical studies to this, they can effectively reduce the risk to an absolute minimum so that they become an informed gamblers in effect. But at the end of the day, they are gamblers, all right? That's all we're doing. We're playing a big gambling game, but we're trying to beat the odds. Now, I know that might scare people, but that's what the oil and gas companies do, okay? So once we've actually discovered something, and in our case, the chance or risk applies to finding hydrocarbons. So either we find it or we don't find it. You can't say we, maybe we found it. We have to decide, and the definition will tell us what a discovery is. Have we found oil and gas, or have we not found oil and gas? There's no in-between case. But once we've found it, of course, we don't know how big it is. And as David showed in that diagram, that uncertainty is large from the first day we find the oil and gas. And the only time we actually know for sure how much oil and gas was under the ground is the day we turn off all the valves and clean up and, and go home. Okay. So even when you make that development decision, the uncertainty can be large. So why do companies appraise? Well, at the point of discovery, the uncertainty is too large to make a big billion dollar commitment. So what we do is we try and reduce that uncertainty to the point where the economic outcomes, are, or the outcomes we could think of are economic, and therefore we're prepared to risk our money that the development will, will, will pay out. There are many cases of fields which have gone badly wrong. So the investment decision date, everything looked great but then something went wrong during the production life, and effectively look at that asset on a full cycle basis, it probably did not make the money. And if you'd known it was going to go wrong, you wouldn't have done it in the first place.